So the funny thing about superpowers that people tend to ignore or overlook at least is that if they were real, they would have just as much nuance in them as anything else that exists. Y you know, cause and effect. Meaning, if superpowers were real, they wouldn't exist as a standalone concept in a vacuum separate from, you know, everything until they're used. I, for one, believe fullheartedly that our world itself could and would be shaped by the various abilities in popular culture, <laughs> even intentionally or unintentionally. But like I said before, with the good comes the bad. Easy example, motorized vehicles. Great for getting around and great to use to make work easier, I guess. Great to style and profile in, but they do have unintended downsides like pollution and the fact that they can be used by psychos. So, long story short, everything has a dark side to it. But remember, nerds and nerdettes, dark doesn't mean evil. It's an absence of light or detectability, aka the unknown. So, it's time for Shay to try his hand at it. This list isn't going to list the negatives to a specific power or anything, but the inevitable side effects that might or might not be seen or known, but will happen regardless, no matter how this power is used, no matter why this power is used, no matter who is used on. So let's get started with the dark side to fire manipulation. The one suffocation. Pretty self-explanatory. Grab an oxygen tank, mask or <laughs> ladle. Because in order to use flame abilities to their fullest, you'll need as much oxygen for yourself and the flames you produce, if not more. Popular culture will rarely portray this fact because it's, well, pretty boring in the overall theme of a story. I mean, imagine that every time a flame user uses his powers, he has to stop and put on an oxygen mask or use an inhaler afterwards. Not to mention spamming attacks are pretty much a no-go, unless you want the previously mentioned problem. So that automatically makes you a prime target for the counterattacking. In addition to that, flame attacks that carry a AOE effect are a definite no-no. They do the same thing, just on a much larger scale. And you know the sucky thing about this? Even if you were to hit the superpower lottery and have no drawback to this power, the previously mentioned would limit you. Just an unfortunate reality of physics. The two, extinguishing yourself. Extinguishing yourself? You dang skippy. This one is fairly simple and ties in closely with the one. In layman's terms, without a steady and fresh supply of air, AKA oxygen, Fire created and manipulated anywhere other than outside will extinguish itself via the rule of supply and demand. The newly created flame wouldn't have enough fuel to sustain itself, so it would have to share with the previously existing flame. I, I don't think I've seen fire share anything. Maybe except burns. But anyway, this means that they will cancel each other out. So here you are wasting all that fuel and now you have nothing to show for it. Now, I won't doubt you in your stubborn straightforwardness. You'll definitely try to test this, and you might even get off a blast or two, maybe three. But if you still don't address the issue, you'll run into problem number one. The three, flame colors and meanings. The color of your flame can tell you what you're burning and how effective your flames are against a target. <laughs> That's right, guys. Fires can exist in different colors and shades, and unfortunately, by uh, burning <clears throat> beings alive, you can tell the specific fire user's strengths and or weaknesses. Orange flames on a target show that you're burning an organic material because of the carbon being released into the flames. Blue flames show that there's little to no carbon indicating something less organic. And in the inverse, you can bet your sweet shade that users emitting flame colors ranging from red to orange are less burningful meaning they're less hot, than those wielding blue or lighter colors. Not to mention the various other funky colors that can exist through the combination of various chemicals, so you'll know what you're burning based on the color of that. The four, having to remain planet bound. This factoid isn't pretty well known because I've asked around and I guess it would make sense, but if the gods were to grant you this ability, not only would you have to watch where you travel on Earth because some parts of the world are more flammable than others, but you'd have to make peace with no space trips. Fire will not form in the vacuum of space because there's no oxygen. None. Zip. Nada. Okay, well at least I can still visit other planets and still fight aliens, right? <laughs> no. No, you could not. Fire is a phenomenon that, to the best of our knowledge, is something that can only exist due to our planet's unique makeup aka the level of oxygen we have on our planet. Think, th come on, think about it. If the ratio of oxygen on our planet was just a little too high or a little too low, then the element itself would either rage out of control upon every spark or wouldn't spark at all respectively. 
There's a reason why our modern society has emergency fire procedures to deal with forest fires and arsonists. And arsonists. The five, energy consumption and conversion ratio. Okay, I'll give you guys this one. This one might not be as fun to think about, but what in the ever loving name of whoever you worship are you going to use to create that kind of energy? But okay, that's cool. You have fire powers and your personality reflects that. So you're a hothead. Cool, cool, great. Now, I mean, not cool because you're hot, but cool. But still, where are you going to get that energy from? Eating? Oh, okay, I guess. But then you still have to convert that stored potential energy into kinetic energy. Oh, okay, so all right, let's get that heart rate going. Yeah, cool. Now you're warmed up. All right, here we go. And long story short, no fire. Well, at least nothing that can burn or maim, at least. You're more likely to see... Yeah, <laughs> that was kind of disappointing, wasn't it?